Hello, my name is Wes and I just bought and installed a jack shaft style garage door opener. This video is about the garage door opener and not about me. Thus there are no images of me on this video and the fact that I may not be the most handsome man in the world. Good reason not to put the image on. When I installed the opener, which was, by the way, one of the easiest garage door openers I've ever installed, I ran the door to the full open position. When I went to close the door, it simply unspooled the lift cable off the spool here. So, I decided I'd call the manufacturer the opener and I told them my problem. They simply stated to call a garage door opener installer. So they know of this problem but they do nothing about it. They know of the problem but they do not tell you of the problem before you purchase the opener. It is so strange to me that they do not address this problem. If they did, they could sell a lot more of these openers. The opener has numerous nice features, but I really like the fact that the door has a locking pin system, which would eliminate someone pulling your emergency release cord on your door and opening it from the outside. So that is what got you to this video to begin with, the uncoiling of the cables. My 10 foot garage door opens one half inch short of the full 10 feet. The highest that I can open my door and not have the cables unspool is seven feet. At this time I do not own anything taller than seven feet so I could just drive in and out and call it good. I do however have two trailers that are often loaded higher than seven feet when I'm working in the garage, I also like to have as much sunlight coming in the garage, so I wanted my door to open higher. The first thing I did is I took my bathroom scale that I stand on to weigh myself, and I pushed on the scale against the top of the door until the door started to move. It took approximately 40 pounds of pressure on the scale to move the door. This is what the door looks like at seven feet. This is where gravity starts taking the weight of the door and the cables will not unspool. So again, I know that my door requires 40 pounds of pressure to get it moving. So I went to internet, see what I could find that allows me to push my door 33 inches until the gravity takes over. I found nothing on internet. Wow, I thought one could find everything on the internet. I did find a thing called garage door pusher springs. I found that these were quite inexpensive and they'd be very easy to install. I continued to do my research on these and this is what I came up with. The longest pusher springs that I could find were 27 inches long. I thought, great, I need 33 inches to achieve my full opening and 27 was close enough. Wait, the total distance that this 27 inch garage or pusher spring can push is 15 inches. This pusher spring applies 10 pounds of force for every one inch of compression. So 15 inches of compression correlate to 150 pounds of force, not only on the garage door panels, but also on the opening. I watched a video on YouTube that states that over time, this extra 150 pounds of pressure will damage the door opener. I believe that this is true. So I developed a system that would apply only the amount of pressure that I needed to get my door moving the first 33 inches. I decided to use pulleys and weights to accomplish my needs. What I developed allows my door 
to open to the almost full position. If someday I need the 100% full opening, I would have to extend the garage door track back the same amount as the door is short of the full opening. At this time, I did not feel that this extra work was needed. So I made a pulley system. I used as much material as I could from home as I had. So in this case, I used a uh, inline skate wheel or a scooter wheel as one of the pulleys. I uh, cored out the center of it so my string here would go in. The four gold looking pulleys came with the brackets that hold the wheel and the bearings. And I simply welded the bracket to a piece of angle iron, then I welded the angle iron to the metal plate that I had. I also had half inch rod, which if I was doing it over, I'd probably use 5 8 rod just because the half inch flexes a little bit. I'd like to take that flex out. And we come towards the end of the rod and I turned a piece of oak that slides on this shaft and this is my compression spring. So this spring compresses at 12.4 pounds per inch. So until the spring compresses two inches, it won't start pushing the 25 pounds of weight I have. And this is on each side of the door. The end of the oak I rounded and that goes into a socket, the opposite shape in that a piece of wood I have on the top of my door. So it hits into the socket, it starts pushing against this spring. Once that spring compresses to approximately two inches, it'll start pushing the rod. The rod is tied to just a string in the back. I figure, or a little piece of rope, not string, rope. This rope has one link of a chain so the rope is not on the piece of metal here. I welded onto my rod, my half inch rod. I figured over time that, that the metal would cut the rope. So the rope goes through the woolly, through the pulley, comes down to my weights. Oh, it comes down to two sets of extension springs. These, again, I just had around the house. I'm sure you can buy them anywhere. You can buy them on eBay. I bought the compression spring on top off of eBay. And then I tied each side to 25 pounds of weight. In this case, I used uh, window weights, old cast iron window weights for my weight. I like these because these were heavy and dense. You could use almost any type of material. You could use a three gallons of water tied to the same system and that's the same amount of weight. On this case, my three gallons of water would cut into my shelf space and would not work for me. So I used com condensed high-weighted high cast iron. When I first opened my garage door with this weighted system, I did not have these extension springs, which helped take the shock up. I didn't have the compression spring up here, which helped take the shock. When the door first hit my oak piece, which was solid on the end of the half-inch round stock metal, my pusher rod, it sounded like a baseball bat hitting a baseball. It was way too loud and I figured this would cause damage. So the first thing I did since I had them is I put these extension springs on. The extension springs actually did quite well. There was not much of an impact afterwards, but I thought it'd be nice to take all the impact out of the system 
and I put the compression spring up here. With the compression spring up there, the door when it opens has almost zero pressure against it. On an instant basis, it slowly applies the pressure and it no longer sounds like a baseball and a bat hitting. So I will go through a couple cycles of opening and shutting the door or specifically having the door hit the weighted system and you can see how it operates. It does a fine job and allows the door to go almost like I said to the almost full position. So at the top of the door you can see I put a piece of wood with a socket for the plunger to hit. The plunger hits, pushes the rod back, the rod pulls the rope back, the rope pulls the weight up. You can see the extension springs bouncing here. But there's not a lot of noise as if a baseball hitting a bat. So I'll cycle the door down just enough to get it off of the pusher rod here. And then I'll open it back up so you can watch the impact and I won't talk so you can hear the impact. So there it releases off the door that gravity takes over. The door continues to go down. And now I will cycle the door up. And it won't talk, let it hit. Almost dead quiet. So if I needed to get my garage door open again to the full height, I'd have to extend the track back and then put my system further back by Maybe I'm eight inches short of full right now. To attach my polar system, my pulley system, to the door track, I cut a piece of wood that fits into the door track. I just did this on my table saw. It's not 100% perfect, 100% tight, but it works 100% perfect. For my push rod system to hit my door in a place I wanted, I decided to space it out an extra inch and a half so I used another 2 by 4 to space it out further. At the end of my pushing rod system I have a rope tied to one link of a chain. That way the chain is rubbing on the metal that I welded to the rod and the rope won't get cut over time. Also on the rod, I welded a little piece of angle iron to hit the pulley wheel so the rod will stop instead of keep pulling to the very end with the weight on it. So it stops the rod where I want the rod to stop.